It's a crisp autumn on the Mongolian grasslands. On a specially chosen day, according to tradition, nomadic herders round up horses and their foals and ready them for branding. By marking the young horse's rump, old Jamps spells out to fellow herdsmen that the foal belongs to him. Not so long ago, all animals were the property of the state. While Mongolia lay in the grip of communism, nomadic herders like Jamps and his family were relegated to surrogate owners, mustered into collectives or negdels, which provided all their needs while keeping them powerless. Under communism, Jamps was only allowed to keep 50 head of livestock. Now his herd of horses alone exceeds 500. He breeds sheep, goats and cattle too, providing the family with all their needs all year round. Ten times every year they move to new pasture, the animal sustenance as important as their own. Inside their traditional Gur home, Dorge, Jamps' wife, prepares the day's fresh milk and cream. Dorge and Jamps have 13 children, all well fed and clothed. She welcomes the freedom to own more livestock since the end of communism, but friends and neighbours around her haven't been as fortunate. I'm the head was hit the Malagol that gets two limbs on the hot list. Although For almost a thousand years, Mongolia has been a nation of nomadic herders. Even now, half the population of two million lives this way. But as the country heads for full blown capitalism, can the simple existence of the nomads continue as it has? To these people, livestock is the only currency they've ever known. But in the market economy, it won't be as simple. Many of the herders have already failed. Only the ones who adjust to the new system can survive and prosper. There is an inexorable uh, social changes are taking place. You can criticize it, but you can't really slow it down or influence it. So the best strategy is to adapt to changes and deal it, you know, with more benefit to you and to your country. So, you know, if, if it takes change in the world of life to get a better income and better future for their children, you know, everybody will agree. Jamps' nephew, Mensahan, has a new Russian jeep. He's taking a family friend and Jamps' daughter, Pagma, back to the countryside for the weekend. Mensahan was raised in the countryside and worked as a crop specialist under the communists. Now he's a trader, a lifeline for Jamps, selling his produce in the city and bringing Jamps what he wants from the urban markets. (laughs) 
Jamsa's daughter Pagma quickly slips back into the countryside chores. She milks the horses, the main ingredient for Mongolia's favorite drink, fermented mare's milk or arag, an integral offering in Mongolian hospitality. Like some of her siblings, she's chosen to reject the herder's lifestyle. In a few days' time, she'll return to the city to begin a degree in medicine. Does that make you feel sad that one of your children has rejected the lifestyle of a herder? Now the visitors have arrived, Jamsa's son Bolbayar kills a sheep, squeezing the aorta to stop blood flowing to the heart. The animal dies quickly and serenely. There's very little mess to keep the wool clean and the internal organs fresh because nomadic herders use every part of the animal. <laughs> In honor of the city guests, a race is organized. Children of the neighborhood will have a chance to show off their riding prowess. Mensahan feels the excitement too. The businessman in him sees this race as something more than child's play. Uh, It's just a bit of fun. The real purpose of his visit is business. Last year, Mensahan helped Jamps buy a truck, giving the old herder a competitive edge in selling his goods in the city market. Jamps paid in kind 7,000 kilos of wool and 100 live sheep. Today, Mensahan wants to buy some of Jamps's sheep, only this time he wants cash. <laughs> Mensahan heads for the city. In front of him, a dusty 120-kilometer ride over grass to the capital Ulaanbaatar, where he'll try to get a good price for Jamsa's sheepskins. Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia's only real city. 
It's a city in a swirl of capitalism after more than 70 years in a socialist cloud. Pagma, the herder's daughter, is happy to be back in the city, the place she likes the best. She and her friends celebrate the start of the student year in a nightclub for Mongolia's new rich. Light years away from a daily routine of milking mares and gutting freshly killed sheep. <laughs> Is city life more fun than milking cows and mares? <laughs> Do you like mare's milk? Oh, just, I can't live without it. The government's new economics advisor doesn't want to end his supply of rural nourishment, but he believes that progress and the nomadic lifestyle will inevitably collide. Their way of life will change in the sense they will be using more electricity, they will be relying on more... Uh, more and better choice of consumption goods. The economic transition has drawn scores of herders to the city fringe, eager for a piece of the action. They live in makeshift suburbs, the beginning of the end of their nomadic existence. Many can't afford city prices and become the urban poor, squandering the few animals they have to stay afloat. They return to the countryside empty-handed, but not Mensahan. He's come to the central hide market to sell Jamps' sheepskins. It's been a good day, and he's got the price he wanted. Do you think the herders can survive in a market economy? Mensahan moves easily between the city traders and the herders, a valuable link between them and one he uses to his advantage. Back on the land, there's always work to be done. Jamps and his household can't rest on the little wealth they've already created. The law of the steppe decrees that nature can take back as much as it provides. <coughs> But Jamps is confident the herders will always be lords of the land, roaming the expanse and providing Mongolia's stumbling economy with much needed income. For now, the portable homes of the nomads hold their ground, but market forces in the city will begin to reshape the vista of Mongolia's grasslands. The strong, like Jamps and his family, will likely survive for generations. The weak will wither, ready for the spring seeds called progress to take root and grow.